Well, hello there boys and girls, and welcome back to Sunday School Online. Unfortunately, uh, we have to go back online again because of the restrictions uh, that have been put in place in Northern Ireland. But that doesn't matter because we're still here and we're still going to do Sunday School. And today we have a very interesting topic that I want to look at. Now this topic is quite a difficult one uh, to understand, and a lot of adults, even people who are like as old as me and old as some of the older folk in church, struggle uh, with this as well. But we're going to take a look at it because I know that you guys are incredibly smart. You know, in the morning when you wake up, I don't know about you, but it's the first thing you do is some of you might go into the bathroom uh, to brush your teeth or to get a shower and you'll probably come across a mirror in the bathroom. And I have a mirror here with me, okay? Now some of you uh, may look at yourselves in the mirror and be horrified at what you see. You may look and go, my goodness, and then realize it's you. Sometimes I do that as well. I look in the mirror and I scare myself. But sometimes we look in the mirror and we see something beautiful, don't we? We, really, um, you know, we, we've maybe got our hair all done nice and we're all nice and clean and washed and we look really nice and think, actually, I'm looking pretty, pretty good today. And you know, some of the older folk as well, maybe you're the same if you're watching this, you look in, you think, hair on a half bad today. Um, when you look in. But a mirror is a very important thing to have in your house, isn't it? Um, and I don't want to turn it around because if I turn it around you'll see my messy kitchen so I'm just going to keep it sitting I guess. But this is a mirror that I have sitting on my lap here. And they're very important because if we didn't have a mirror we wouldn't be able to see ourselves. Sure we wouldn't. We would just we'd be relying on other people to tell us what we look like. So sometimes maybe you've had dinner, sometimes I've had dinner, and you've had a big bit of sauce stuck on your lip and or, or over your face. You wouldn't know until someone tells you, so it's very important that we have a mirror. Mirrors are very, very important. But today, I want to look at a verse in the book of Colossians. Now, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be taking a look at the book of Colossians. It's one of my favorite books in the Bible because it's filled with so many incredible things that we can know about God and learn about Jesus as well. So what I want to do is I just want to read a passage from uh, the book of Colossians. Uh, and this is found in chapter 1. We're looking at chapter 1 this week, and then next week chapter 2, and then after that chapter 3. This is what the Bible says. So it's in Colossians chapter 1, verses 15, reading on from there. It says, The Son, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Now I want to note, I want you to remember this at the very start, if you've got your Bibles with you, uh, if you haven't got your Bibles, make sure you read this verse after this because it's very important. In verse 15 says, the Son is the image of the invisible God. Now remember I was saying that I was talking about the mirror that you have in your house. You see, what this is basically saying is that Jesus is God. That's what we learn in the church. That's what we believe as Christians. That Jesus is the Son of God. But he is the image of the invisible God because God is invisible. We can't see God, we can't smell, we can't see him, we can't touch him because God's in heaven. But Jesus is the visible representation. He is God in flesh. Now, I've got my whiteboard here and this is where things can get a little bit tricky. So I need you to stay with me, okay? Because I want to do a bit of drawing. I love drawing. I love drawing my whiteboard, so I'm going to do this right now, okay? So this is planet Earth here, okay? This is where we live on earth. So we've got our, we'll just draw a wee random sort of kind of bits here that this is the land, I'm trying to draw Africa, and then you've got us up here, okay, so there's England and I've drawn it really pretty, but you can imagine this is planet earth, okay, and we live on planet earth. But you see, up here, and I'm not talking about in space, okay, so I'm not talking about space, but I'm talking about in heaven, okay, we have, and my pen is running out, so up in heaven, okay, this is heaven up here, way, way, way above earth and way, way outside of our time, we have God exists, okay? God exists outside of our time and he, he's, he's out there. And for years and years and years in the Old Testament, God spoke down to earth through prophets and through different people and through different events. God spoke to people on earth. We have Abraham and Moses are an example of that. But you see, this really wasn't good enough because man, humanity, man and woman were broken off from God. So I want to pretend that this is a barrier that is p p stopping us from getting to God. Because down here we have sin, which is stopping us 
and it's blocking us from getting into communion with God because God is so holy, He can't deal with sin. He can't have sin anywhere near Him because He is so holy. So we've been blocked, and God has, tra- has broken through this barrier in the purpose of trying to rescue humanity. But you see, what happened was, is that this is difficult because God is trying to speak through to, you, uh, to mankind who are sinful and broken. We see, if you remember the stories of Israel, what happens? Israel kept sinning and they kept going back to false gods and they kept worshipping everything else other than God. But see, God had a plan. So he had a massive plan that he put in action right at the start. And this plan was to bring Jesus down to earth. Now, God, as I said, remember God is outside of time because God is big, isn't he? He's so much bigger than us. He's so much we can't see him, we can't touch him, we can't smell him because he's so far outside of our understanding. But God stepped down into our world. He stepped down into our world through Jesus. So Jesus stepped down into our world. He came through. Because remember, because of our sin, we can't go up. But God had to come down to rescue us. And this is quite a tricky thing because when we say things like God is fully human and fully God as well, that's a really difficult thing to think about. Even people my age, as I said earlier, we struggle with that. Older people struggle with this idea, trying to think that God was full, Jesus was fully human and fully divine. But that's what the Bible teaches us, and that's what we believe as Christians. So God stepped down into time, and He was a man. He stepped in as a man. Remember the Christmas story? We just we remember doing the Christmas story not only a few weeks ago with Mary and Joseph, uh, and how Mary was Jesus's mother, and Jesus would would grow up. Jesus was God stepping down. So it's very important, boys and girls, that when we think about this, that we think that Jesus is God. That's who he is. He is God in flesh. He stepped down to rescue us because, as I said, we have red as the color of sin. We have sin in our lives, so we can't go up because, remember, there's this thing stopping us because we're, we're sinful. So God had to step down to rescue us, and that's what he did in the form of Jesus. So it's very important that we remember that because sometimes... You know, we can, we can forget about that. We can forget that Jesus was fully God and he was fully human as well. So whenever we, we're talking to him and we're praying to him and maybe we're learning about him at church or in Sunday school, we know that Jesus is the visible image of an invisible God. So if we want to know what God looks, God is like, we want to know what, uh, what God is like, you know, what does God like and what does God dislike? Well, we've only got to look to Jesus because Jesus is is fully God stepped down into our world. So boys and girls, you know, it's great that we have a mirror in our house. I'm really thankful for having mirrors in my house. It means I can look and see what I look like and get a nice reflection of myself. But it's important to see that Jesus is the reflection of God on earth. He is God himself come down to rescue us. So that's the first chapter of Colossians. That's what Paul teaches us in the book of Colossians, that Jesus is God and everything was created through him and it was created for him and next week we're going to take a look a a little bit more about what that means so thank you for joining and i hope that uh, you will have a good sunday and i will see you next week